I have to say on the library thing, I was really impressed by Belmollet Library and the library. I was there last week around the sensory room that they had and I had never seen it before where they had the table with the games on it and I thought what a wonderful way, whether you're a child or an adult who's absolutely stressed out to, uh, it's just having that space and uh, that, that safe space uh, for people to be able to relax and so forth. I agree with you, the work that libraries are doing and the more role that libraries can play, um, uh, the better. But I really want to commend all of the libraries uh, that I know they're so, so important. I want to ask you, Suzanne, just in terms of your um, um, recommendation of further funding and provision for universal and targeted early intervention programmes, um, how, where do you want to see the funding targeted or the resources targeted? And I'm just imagining, see if you're in a school and teachers are already stressed out and trying to just cope with the day-to-day -day things to get through the day, never mind what they may be experiencing themselves in terms of accommodation and affordability and, and, and all of that. How, how can we then hope to have universal early intervention programmes? when schools are under so much stress and strain. Yeah, first of all, I agree with you. A lot asked of schools and a lot, a lot is asked of teachers. And I suppose in our experience in Bernardo's, we tend to bring the resource into schools. Mm. So, and, and the teachers really do appreciate that. Um, but first of all, because they have so much on their plate, but also sometimes for things like the National Wellbeing Programme or Roots of Empathy or the Friendship Group, but no, particularly the other two, is they, they observe the children in a different way because they, the children are absolutely, or teachers are absolutely invited to participate if they wish or certainly to observe, and they, they just find that a very useful resource. So I absolutely think it's, it's crucial that we don't put extra pressure on, on teachers. Um, I think in terms of, of where the resources should go, I think... That's, that's a really difficult problem because in some ways that we, you, you know yourselves that some, some areas have loads of resources and some have less. And there needs to be some equality with, with, with regards to that. And I suppose what I, the committee needs, needs to probably be aware, be aware of is, is where, where is resource intensive and where is less so? And I would say target some of, some of the resources there I, in whichever areas that you would know of yourselves. You know, I think that's, that's really crucial. And just to give you a nice little example about our relationship with the library in Kappa Quinn, there's a library just literally across the road from us, a fantastic, really small library, and the library um, lends us rooms for resources, and it's a really good community partnership, and I think that's also crucial. Local communities can be fantastic, with agencies working really well together. That's what we need more of. So it's, it's on the ground up, ideally, mm -hmm. I would suggest. Yeah. Yeah, um, it, it is. So just in terms of that, the early intervention programmes, how do they break down in terms of urban and rural schools? I mean, I think, I mean, I can't, I don't have that with, with, I should have it, but I don't. I suppose from our point of view is we, we don't advertise the other programmes availability. We tend to operate a lot within the areas Bernard's currently is, except with Roots of Empathy. We, we've, we've a broader reach there as well, mm -hmm. because that's actually, that relies on community resources. So, so the coordinators, a lot of people volunteer their time from other agencies to make that happen. So I think what we have to do is, is, is really have a lot of goodwill, because you know yourselves, it's going to be limited budgets. Mm. I'm just very conscious even last night in terms of I was at a pyrite meeting in Westport and what children are suffering in the homes in long term, say where the pyrite situation, the micro situation has been going on over a decade. So you've had whole childhoods where there's the fear and anxiety and everything else that's brought about with watching your home crumbling down. How do we support those children? I mean, the best that could be offered for Mayo was there was an online service, which I think is wholly inadequate. Um, so I just, anyway, it's, it's just... Well, I, I agree that's inadequate in an online service mm -hmm. in that context. And I think it's supporting the parents and supporting the children and saying they're realistic worries. And hopefully the government is doing something about it. I mean, that's one example, which I'm, as I understand, I know there needs to be more money. But yes, I think... Yeah. Big issue. Issue. Uh, Michael, sorry, Michael just wanted to say something there. Is that okay? And I only wanted to ask you around the link with the school meals and what you're doing in terms of grow your own. Yeah, um, if I could, yeah, it, just to the point about funding, like I, I think one of the challenges, and I don't know if, if it's a common issue for everybody, but it's, it's trying to figure out where, where potential funding for programmes could come from because. If you think about our, our work, you know, it could be education, could be health, could be agriculture, mm -hmm. could be community and rural development and so on. Um, and, and the kind of siloized sort of thinking that tends to happen makes that even more challenging. So I mentioned in my submission the, the uh, School and Food Forum, which was set up 
which I thought it, it was convened by Healthy Ireland um, and was obviously focused around, around food in schools as opposed to mental health. But it was a brilliant example of a kind of whole of government approach. So there was people from um, education, health, agriculture, all the different government departments, as well as you know, ter you know, mm -hmm. NGOs like ourselves, um, and I, I, you know, the, the, that that sort of forum did fantastic work in bringing people together and making you know everybody getting aware of what programs they're running and what's out there. But then it sort of ran aground a little bit, I think, because there was sort of beyond kind of making each other aware of what's going on when it came to sort of action and funding the the sort of it tended to sort of ebb back out into its into the the different departments so i think that's a common challenge um for for organizations like ourselves who are looking for funding for particular things it's like where 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 do you where do you go for that funding as as Suzanne mentioned the department of education is very reluctant to endorse any particular program that they haven't created themselves and that creates difficulties as well mm -hmm.